Good morning everyone. It is Tuesday morning and we are going to meet together just to read God's words. We're going to read Acts chapter 23 this morning. So let's hear God's word. This is Paul again as he continues in his trial before the High Council. Gazing intently at the High Council, Paul began. Brothers, I have always lived before God with a clear conscience. Instantly, Ananias, the high priest, commanded those close to Paul to slap him on the mouth. But Paul said to him, God will slap you, you corrupt hypocrite. What kind of judge are you to break the law yourself by ordering me struck like that? Those standing near Paul said to him, Do you dare to insult God's high priest? I'm sorry, brothers. I didn't realise he was the high priest, Paul replied, for the scripture said, You must not speak evil of any of your rulers. Paul realised that some of the high council were Sadducees and some were Pharisees. So he shouted, Brothers, I am a Pharisee, as were my ancestors. I am on trial because my hope is in the resurrection of the dead. This divided the council, the Pharisees against the Sadducees. For the Sadducees say there is no resurrection or angels or spirits, but the Pharisees believe in all of these. So there was great uproar. Some of the teachers of the law who were Pharisees jumped up and began to argue forcibly. We see nothing wrong with him, they shouted. Perhaps a spirit or an angel spoke to him. As the conflict grew more violent, the commander was afraid they would tear Paul apart. So he ordered his soldiers to go and rescue him by force and take him back to the fortress. That night, the Lord appeared to Paul and said, Be encouraged, Paul. Just as you have been a witness for me here in Jerusalem, you must preach the good news in Rome as well. The next morning, a group of Jews got together and bound themselves with an oath not to eat or drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 of them in the conspiracy. They went to the leaders and the, the leading priests and elders and told them, We have bound ourselves with an oath to eat nothing until we kill Paul. So you and the high council should ask the commander to bring Paul back to the council again. Pretend you want to examine his case more carefully. We will kill him on the way. But Paul's nephew, his sister's son, heard their plan and went to the fortress and told Paul. Paul called for one of the Roman officers and said, Take this young man to the commander. He has something important to tell him. So the officer did, explaining Paul, the prisoner, called me over and asked me to bring this young man to you because he has something to tell you. The commander took his hand, led him aside and asked, What is it you want to tell me? Paul's nephew told him, Some Jews are going to ask you to bring Paul before the high council tomorrow, pretending they want to get some more information. But don't do it. There are more than 40 men hiding along the way ready to ambush him. They have vowed not to eat or drink anything until they have killed him. They are ready now, just waiting for your consent. Don't let anyone know that you have told me, the commander warned the young man. Then the commander called two of his officers and ordered, Get 200 soldiers ready to leave for Caesarea at 9 o'clock tonight. Also take 200 spearmen and 70 mounted troops. Provide horses for Paul to ride and get him safely to Governor Felix. Then he wrote this letter to the governor. I, Claudius Lystris, to the, his excellency Governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by some Jews and they were about to kill him when I arrived with the troops. When I learned that he was a Roman citizen, I removed him to safety. Then I took him to their high council to try and learn the basis of their accusations against him. I soon discovered the charge was something regarding their religious law. Certainly nothing worthy of imprisonment or death. But when I was informed of a plot to kill him, I immediately sent them to you. I have told his accusers to bring their charges before you. So that night, as ordered, the soldiers took Paul as far as Antipatris. They returned to the fortress the next morning, while the mounted troops took him to Caesarea. When they arrived in Caesarea, they presented Paul and the letter to the governor Felix. He read it and then asked Paul, What province he was from. Cecilia, he answered, I have heard your case. I will hear your case myself when your accusers arrive, the governor told him. 
Then the governor ordered him to be kept in prison at Herod's headquarters. Amen. And that was Acts chapter 23. Another part of Paul's story um, as people turn against him, as people turn against the message of God, um, as the Jewish leaders want to keep the law just as they see it. Um, they can't even agree themselves. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, two separate sects, one believing in resurrection and the angels, and the other one not. Um, and Paul very commonly uses that to divide them, just to see, uh, and just shows them up for the three pillars. They're arguing about their own thoughts, um, rather than maybe turning back to God's word again. No different from the day so often. We have so many different churches and so many different uh, denominations. We fall out with each other really easily. And yeah, okay, there's things in scripture that we might see it one way and somebody else might see it another way. But we need to, to learn how to talk about these things, how to discuss them, how to um, graciously accept other people's points of view without falling out with them. You know, we've all been charged with the, we've all been given the great commission to go and make disciples of all nations. We've all been told to tell others about the good news of Jesus, about what he has done for us. We all have that responsibility. Yet we waste so much time just arguing amongst ourselves. Maybe we should stop looking inside and look more outside. Thanks folks for listening this morning. Uh, we're just going to pray this morning. Uh, the thing particularly to pray for is just David Bruce, who's now become moderator of our church last night, um, as he takes up this role. Again, it's, it's going to be a difficult time for him with everything that's going on. Uh, again, he's going to be in meetings and in the forefront and issuing statements and thoughts and guidance. So let's pray for David and those who work alongside him this morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for this day. Thank you again for your blessing, bringing us safely through another, another night. For the rising of the sun, the dawning of a day, a day which you have given to us. So Lord, thank you for that. Again, we just have to open our eyes and, and look around us to see how wonderful you are and how great is your provision to us. So Lord, we are so grateful and so thankful. Lord, for some people today waking up, it's going to be a different day, a different way for, for a time. I think about David Bruce as he takes up the role of moderator within our church. Uh, Lord, there's going to be a lot of pressure on him and on his family. Um, his days are going to be very different now for this next year. We just pray that you'd be with him and his family, that you would be close to them. That in the days that lie ahead, that you would give him the strength that he needs, the fortitude, just to be able to, to be a, a very public witness for you. Give him words of wisdom. Um, Lord, help him to just to really be led and guided by you. Uh, so that whatever he speaks, that people will listen and realise um, that they're listening to somebody who is very much in tune with you. Lord, for all of us, continue to be with us and help us. Um, as these lockdown restrictions start to ease, just give us wisdom. Lord, we have seen pictures from the TV of people gathering so closely. And there's a natural fear that this will just start the virus to spread again. Lord, just help us to resp be responsible. And help us not to be so fearful that we stop living. But help us just to be sensible about what we're doing. Lord, thank you that through all of this you are with us. You're constantly with us. You have given us that promise, I will never leave you or forsake you. Lord, just be with us today and always, we pray. In Christ's name, Amen. Thank you folks for joining with me this morning. Um, I take it you have a lovely day. It looks like it's going to be another nice day out there today. Take care, look after yourselves and God bless. See you tomorrow. Bye.